Hey everyone, it's Tira with Rent Mason Bees, and I was inspired today to do this video for two reasons. One, we got a, a picture on one of our Mason Bee groups asking about a bee that had just emerged from an unclean nesting block, and she was wondering what was on the back of it. Well, I'll show you the picture right here. It's a Mason Bee covered in pollen mites, and it had emerged from a nesting block that had never been cleaned before. Um, the second reason I'm doing this video is I'm getting a couple of questions because I've mentioned it in previous videos about how to transition from your old nesting blocks to the new proper nesting material. So today I want to show you how to do that. Um, as I've mentioned before in our videos, the best type of nesting material is the kind that you can pull apart. So stacking trays or uh, cardboard tubes you can unravel in the fall. Um, those are the best type. You have to harvest and clean your nesting blocks. Um, I get asked all the time, well, why? In nature, they don't harvest and clean in nature. In nature, they're camouflaging and they're finding holes in other parts of your yard. It, when you're putting up a bee house, you're now providing a space for predators to also have easy access to um, solitary bees. So it is really, really important to harvest and clean your mason bees. The worst type of nesting material is the kind where you have a big log and you drill holes in it. I know that's a really popular thing to do, but that over time, you're gonna really harm your solitary bee populations. So there will be more predators in there than mason bees. Um, the other kind are bamboo reeds. And I know this is this is talked about all over. They look easy, they're, they're um, you know easy to put out and st sturdy. But bamboo reeds can get mold and fungus and you cannot open these as well. So today I wanted to show you our method that we've, um, we do um, out at farms and all over when we have a whole bunch of tubes that come back um, of nesting material. Because there's baby bees in here. There's baby bees in these bamboo reeds. There's probably five to seven little babies in here. So we, we don't want to harm them and you can't get to them. So if you are able to get to your nesting block and clean, definitely do that. Just pull out the cocoons that are still in there. You're not gonna have time to wash them. It's now, we're almost into spring right now, so you're not gonna have time to do that. Fall is when you wanna do your actual harvesting. Um, but if you are able to get to anything right now, do it if you can, and then just put them in like a jello box or a pudding box. Get the cocoons that you save and just put them very high tech in a jello box or a little pudding box, poke a hole on it and then they'll emerge. You can't put loose cocoons up on top of your nesting block, the birds will get to them. Um, this is a nesting block that we got back from, from someone that just dropped it off because they didn't, they knew that the material um, they couldn't get to. You guys look how many, these are all full of baby bees. You can tell in here when the mud, when they cap it with mud, there are mason bees. Now these are all different sizes, but you can't get to these. These are super glued in the back of this box. They also, this kit also came with um, stacking trays, which you can pull apart. So if you have a kit similar to this that has half tubes you can't use and half blocks, then open up these blocks and salvage the cocoons that are in here. But if you have reeds, bamboo reeds, I'm gonna show you how to release the bees safely and then you're gonna wanna get rid of that old nesting material. So I don't have um, a log right now that has holes drilled into it to show you that, um, but you would do the same process with that like I'm gonna show you today. So Jim, our owner that works with farmers and has been working with bees for almost his whole life, he, he learned the practice from his dad, he uses the sawdust from the wood shop. Now the sawdust in the wood shop, as you know, we do and build all our own houses. We build all our own nesting blocks. So we have a lot of sawdust. I said to Jim today, I said, um, I'm doing this video to teach people how to transition from bad blocks to good blocks. People aren't gonna have access to sawdust. So what can we offer? And I found um, just plain old grass seeds. Um, can also do the trick. So you just want to have something fine. Um, this is a bag I just bought at the hardware store. It's just lawn shade mix. Same type of consistency because what we're going to do is we're going to sprinkle this all over the nesting blocks and then what's going to happen is this material is going to fill the holes. So let me show you how to do that. So I have a couple examples here. I have this old house, half of it you can, I'll just leave those in there because we can harvest those. We can't harvest these so we need to be able to cover those up. 
I took a bunch of these uh, bamboo tubes that you can see. Good old handy dandy uh, yogurt container. Uh, and I had to get a mason jar for mason bees. I mean, come on, that's kind of a no brainer. And then this was just another block that someone sent back to us. Now, some of these tubes you can see are the cardboard that you can unravel. Um, so we'll do that ourselves. But I just wanted to show you kind of what to do if you have this type of setup. Um, this has a big space in it. So if you can zoom in on this, I'll show you. That has a large space. So you're gonna wanna get some newspaper or I have bubble wrap. You're just gonna kinda wanna shove it down in here so that they're kind, they're all upright and facing upright. You can get newspaper and just get it tight. So, okay, so then you have, I have my three examples here, or my, I guess five. All right, so the sawdust method is you're going to just sprinkle and cover about a half an inch all the tubes or all the, yeah, I guess these are tubes. And you're gonna do the same on this side, about a half an inch, okay? And then I'm gonna do these with half. I'm gonna do packets of grass seed so you can see what that looks like. And just cover. They're gonna go in between the, the two, but you just wanna get the holes covered on top, okay? And then I'm gonna do sawdust on these guys. It'll make a bit, bit of a mess, but you just wanna cover these with about a half an inch of sawdust, grass seed, something of really fine material. So what's gonna happen are the mason bees will start to emerge in, uh, of course, springtime when temperatures reach about 55 degrees. When they emerge, they're gonna crawl through the sawdust. This is not gonna hurt them. It's super fine. You don't wanna use sand, that's too heavy for them. You just wanna use a lightweight material. They're gonna emerge and they're gonna crawl through that tube. They're gonna come out through the sawdust and you know there'll be about five or seven bees in here. As each one crawls out, the material, the sawdust or the grass seed is then gonna fill the hole. They are not gonna wanna go back in that hole to lay their eggs. So once you don't see any more activity of bees coming out, that's when you can now dispose of your old nesting material. Now I know some of them are still gonna crawl through pollen mites. Some of them are still gonna have the Houdini fly that are gonna be in there. Um, the pollen mites is the big concern. Um, I, I'll show you a picture, a couple pictures of what pollen mites look like on the back of bees. Um, unfortunately, um, that might occur if you have had these nesting blocks for a long time. Um, but just know that year after year, your bees will get healthier if you're cleaning them every fall. So that's what I wanted to show you today about how to, how to salvage baby bees in old nesting material. I don't want you guys to throw it away, um, but we do want to save what we can. And this is a really, this is just a trick and a method that we've been doing for years with um, tubes and stuff that come back that we want to save the bees, but we don't want the nesting material anymore. So if you have any questions, feel free to give me a call or an email at info at redmasonbees.com. I'm also gonna put links down below on our harvest video. Um, we're gonna have a couple more videos come out on uh, pollen mites and uh, chalk brood. We are doing a study right now with the university, so I'm, I'll share that with everybody. Um, but yeah, that's just the process of transitioning from old nesting material, holes drilled in logs, and uh, bamboo reeds to the proper nesting material, which are stacking trays, and uh, tubes that you can unravel, cardboard tubes that you can unravel. All right, so if you have any questions, let us know. Happy pollinating, bye.